Good morning. <clears throat> Welcome to worship on the fifth and last Sunday in the season of Lent. It is good to be gathered uh, both here in person and also uh, we welcome those who are joining us online. Uh, just a few announcements. First, I want to say thank you to all the people who came yesterday to, to clean up and work at the church to make everything look beautiful. With all the people here, you might not see how beautiful the pews are and everything was, um, was cleaned. Um, in the alley and all over the buildings, they really did a lot of work. And we had almost 30 people to help with that and we're very grateful. What you may not know, and she probably doesn't want me to tell you, is that for weeks ahead of time, Brooks Nana was painting, um, repainting in here in the sanctuary, and it looks really beautiful. And I think Dick helped her too, so yeah. <laughs> Um, that, we're very grateful for that. It looks nice. We're going to have a very festive Easter. Um, I also want to thank Pastor Boynton. You'll see when we get to the sermon that it's, uh, I don't pop up to preach, and it'll have my name. We had a little family emergency, and everything's okay, but Pastor Boynton um, offered to, um, to preach so that I wouldn't have to, so that's why. It's not a mistake. We didn't forget. Um, <laughs> Uh, so this Wednesday is our last Wednesday in the, in the season of Lent, last gathering. Uh, we will be gathering at 545 for um, soup and sandwich supper. So if you haven't had a chance to do that, the soups have been wonderful. Um, and then at 630 for worship and um, then 7 o'clock for um, both bell rehearsal and the studies that we have. There's notes about that in the bulletin. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday, um, Palm Passion Sunday, so we will be hearing the reading of the Passion. Um, also, it's the day we annually will meet the other congregations at the old, um, old um, courthouse. Thank you, I'm not, not thinking. The old courthouse on the steps to do a brief um, service of worship with our brothers and sisters in Christ at all the downtown churches. We will meet outside on the steps to walk together at 1020 next Sunday. So um, just want to make sure you know that. And then that kicks off a whole week of worship services. There are at least one, there's at least one service a day, but sometimes two in Holy Week. So the schedule is printed for you in, in the back of the bulletin. Um, also on Palm Sunday, after this service, uh, we will be gathering for lunch for those who are, are, in, are wanting to become a member or to find out more about Grace. Um, and so that we do need an RSVP for that for lunch. So um, if you'll email us um, or let one of the pastors know today, that would be very helpful. Um, I think those are all the announcements that I have. I hope I didn't forget anything. Let us begin our worship with the confession and forgiveness. Please rise. <clears throat> In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us 
and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together. O oh God, with steadfast love you draw us to yourself, and in mercy you receive our prayers. Strengthen us to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit, that through life and death we may live in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, 
Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of, least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their inequity and remember their sin no more. Word of God, word of life. Praise be to God. A reading from Hebrews. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, you are my son, today I have begotten you, as he says also in another place. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Word of God, word of life.
The Holy Gospel according to John, the tenth, 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. And Philip went and told Andrew. And then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and for those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will be my servant also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. And then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to them. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Be seated as I invite our children to go to children's word time at this time. <clears throat> Grace and peace are yours from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Last fall, we cleaned out a planting bed in our yard. When we had moved to our house nearly 10 years ago, it had an oak tree that was progressively dying. Leaves would only come onto the tree for a few months and then they'd fall off. And then those seasons got even shorter, so we knew something must be going on. And then the limbs just started falling off. Well, the biggest problem was that it sat by a shared fence with a neighbor, and it was within reach of our house should it fall down. So it came down. We took it down. It didn't fall down. Once down and cleaned up, we got a new bed for planting. For years, I, for the last few years, I've been mixing in compost and soil and covering with mulch so that it, last year it actually sort of grew some watermelon and squash. So this past fall, we cleaned it out with hopes of making a more permanent flower and plant garden. A few choice lamb's ear plants were planted, which thrived throughout the winter. But in addition to that, we received gifts of what looked like dead flowers in paper bags. Butterfly weed, black-eyed Susans, among others. And they looked dead dry and crispy. They'd been cut for a month or two prior. What I find so fascinating with plants such as these is that it's these very dead plants that offer the seed that will grow into beauty later in the year. They haven't come up yet, so in an act of faith, I will continue to water and look for new life, and you can check in with me this summer to see if it took root. But a few things are at play here today in our readings. Our first reading filled with a declaration from God from the prophet Jeremiah. It's a reading that we do hear from time to time, filled with good news. We'll hear it actually three times this year and twice for each of the next two years. I think the curators of the lectionary thought it was important for us to hear this one over and over. I'll make a new covenant, says God. Not like that one when I took them out of Egypt, the one they broke, you know, sin from last week. Broken people, brokenness, the problem, the problem that we are the problem. Hi, it's me. And it's not some easy fix for us to undo the problem that we inhabit. Actually, it's not a fix that we can make at all. It's a fix dependent upon God's mercy, upon God's grace. This time God is going to put God's law in the people and write it on their hearts. God forgiving God's people, loving the people, sending the Son for all the world. 
by extension into the people of all time, which you and I are a part of that covenant, that promise too. So that new covenant is Jesus incarnate in flesh, full of life and then death, resurrection, and ultimately ascension, all wrapped up as a gift for God's people. A free gift, I might add, undeserved mercy, and ultimately understood as the same name of our congregation, grace. Friends, we are dependent on God's grace, on God's mercy, undeserved mercy. Jeremiah prophesies of God's desires and God's ability to wipe the slate clean and to come even closer than before in the form of a new covenant with God's people. But how is this possible, one might ask? God and God's people were already as close as husband and wife, one flesh. Even so, God promises to forgive the breaking of the relationship and forge an even more profound unity and intimacy with God's people. In our psalm, as we heard our choir sing, is a song of relief and joy of the forgiveness sustained by God's Spirit. The psalmist appears to understand and articulate our condition. It was during the Passover festival that some Greeks came to Philip and said, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. So Philip went to Andrew, and then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus about this request. And Jesus' response to this request is a good agrarian or farming story. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains yet a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Not only do we see the fruits of the planting in Christ's resurrection and ascension, we see the life cycle of planting in our very own lives, our very own faith lives. Our lives, like all the faithful before us, live through a constant cycles in life, like a plant cycle. Seeds planted, seeds watered, seeds nourished with air and soil and pop up out of the ground and grow up and bear fruit and provide for those around us, eventually dying and becoming that fertile ground in which new seeds are then planted. In the Disney movie Encanto, the family house It's a place that the whole family lived. It was filled with secrecy and pain. It's a beautiful movie if you haven't seen it. Sorry, there might be a few spoilers, but it's still worth watching. The family house begins to crumble. Eventually the house dies and turns to rubble. And then in that moment, the family comes together to experience the giftedness of each of its members. And only then is it rebuilt into something real, into a place with life. And beauty. Author Brené Brown says, no vulnerability, no creativity, no tolerance for failure, no innovation. It is that simple, she advised. If you're not willing to fail, you can't innovate. If you're not willing to build a vulnerable culture, you can't create. She also says vulnerability is hard, and it's scary, and it's dangerous, But it's not as hard, scary, or dangerous as getting to the end of our lives and having to ask ourselves, what if I would have shown up? What if I would have said, I love you? Brown told the crowd, show up and be seen and answer the call to courage, because you're worth it. You're worth being brave. When we are vulnerable, we die to self and rise together with the body of Christ stronger than before. In the life of this congregation, there are centuries of legacy that happened before us of the faithful in Winchester and the Valley of Virginia. You can take a quick glance through this heritage, our history book, about our congregation in the Shenandoah Valley. This place, originally known as the Lutheran Church in Winchester, then known as Grace Evangelical Lutheran Church, has been rooted in the gospel, loving and caring for this community for over 270 years. Our forebears labored in the ministry of the gospel in this place, and by the grace of God, we too have received that inheritance and the opportunity to steward in this place. Ministries and opportunities have come and gone. Opportunities that blossomed and shone brightly like the sun, yet eventually die away, lay fallow, for some things may still be waiting new birth. 
When I arrived at Grace nearly 10 years ago, we were toward the end of the lifespan of an incredible ministry for at-risk children in our community. Team Grace provided tutoring, enrichment, art, and music for students that were brought here from one of the schools by bus after school. As many of you know, that pro program no longer exists. The soil, though, has laid fallow for a handful of years, and now this past fall, we've been approached about an opportunity for tutoring third graders at some of the Winchester City Schools. You may or may not know that in the Commonwealth of Virginia, third grade is a time in children's lives where the schools are assessing the standards of reading. The pandemic provided or proved quite difficult for public education, and there are many children in our community that need assistance in the Winchester, Frederick County area. At least two of our folks at Grace have been trained to go into the school and work on reading one-to-one. -one. They would love for more to be engaged in this opportunity. And as I look upon this ministry that we undertake here at Grace, this is one place, just one of the places, where I see vivid life, death, and the possibility for new life in this opportunity. While it isn't in the walls of the church building, it's an opportunity for us to live out our lives of faith in caring for our neighbors in need. We also do this for children through Bright Futures, through Highland Food Pantry, through CCAP, and more. Let me know or uh, someone from Service and Outreach know if you're interested in any of those opportunities. Everything in this world has a lifespan or a life cycle. Humans, plants, animals, riverbanks, even mountains. Even buildings have those cycles. Old bricks crumble, roofs leak, heating and air break. Emphasis on particular ministries shift. You have a faithful and faith-filled renovation task group and others who were about three years in who strived to be vulnerable and take a deep dive into the structural future of this place. Deep conversation with architects and one another to renovate spaces in the church for greater efficiency, but even more so, greater opportunity for new ministry in new ways that might just be springing up. This is an exciting time in our history of grace. As I mentioned, it takes things dying for new life to emerge, whether that be physical death or death of stuff, or of death that comes about from being vulnerable with one another. In death, Christ gives new life. Paul writes in one of his letters, In Christ the old has passed away, and Christ makes all things new. You see, death, new life. It is only in dying that new life can come. Next Sunday kicks off Holy Week. On Good Friday, we remember that it's Friday and Sunday's coming. Death may look us in the face in the things that we do or the things we don't do, in our priorities or in the happenstances of our lives, in our vulnerabilities. And as with Christ in the cycles of our life, it's Friday and Sunday's coming. Death comes, dare I say necessary, so that resurrection can follow. Christ invites us to come and die. And friends, we are resurrection people. And you don't get a resurrection without death. So maybe we are those dead flowers, those seeds that fall into the earth and are nourished by, say, the waters of baptism, nurtured by the Holy Spirit, through the sacraments at the table, by those around us in the Holy Spirit who teach us and show us Christ's love so that we, in turn, nurture others and provide fertile soil for the grains of wheat to grow. In Jesus' name, amen.
Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need. God the covenant, through the church you draw us into community. We give thanks for the means of grace around which we gather. Inspire writers, musicians, and artists whose creative gifts adorn our worship. Hear us, O oh God. You lavish the earth with extravagant beauty. Preserve the rich and complex diversity of living things. Support local, national, and international efforts to protect the environment for future generations. Hear us, O oh God. Your desire is peace and plenty for all people. Defend those who challenge oppression and expose corruption. Support advocates for human rights, social justice, and the welfare of children, and guide us to be involved in these peacemaking efforts. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for any experiencing estrangement, conflict, or abuse in families and intimate relationships. Protect and comfort all who are vulnerable, especially those living in institutions. Hear us, O oh God. In gratitude for your presence among us, we ask for your support for ministries of prayer and caregiving in this congregation. Move us to reach out to any who are homebound, lonely, grieving, in treatment, or ill. We pray especially for Susan, Bill, Ken, Cheryl, Jeremy, Anne, Sheila, Kitty, Jim, Diane, Paul, Pete, Brady, Ellen, Donna, Elaine, Barbara, Bill, Michelle, Kay, Lane, Grant, Robert, Lillian, Kevin, Mary Catherine, Holly, Tiffany, Sherry, Alana, Joan, Susie, and others we name now. Hear us, O God. God of promise, we give thanks for the saints who faith inspires us. Grant us faith to trust in your everlasting love. Hear us, O God. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let's share Christ's peace with one another. Good morning. Kirby, Martha, nice to meet you.
Let us pray. O God, our provider, you have not fed us with bread alone, but with words of grace and life. Bless us and these your gifts, which we receive from your bounty. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. O God most mighty, O God most merciful, O God our rock and our salvation, hear us as we praise, call us to your table, and grant us your life. When the earth was a formless void, you formed order and beauty. When Abraham and Sarah were barren, you sent them a child. When the Israelites were enslaved, you led them to freedom. Ruth faced starvation, David fought Goliath, and the psalmist cried out for healing, and full of compassion, you granted the people your life. You entered our sorrows in Jesus, our brother. He was born among the poor. He lived under oppression. He wept over the city. With infinite love, he granted the people your life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his death, we cry out, Amen. Amen. Celebrating his resurrection, we shout, Amen. Amen. Trusting his presence in every time and place, we plead, Amen. Amen. O God, you are breath, send your spirit on this meal. O God, you are bread, feed us with yourself. O God, you are wine, warm our hearts and make us one. O God, you are fire, transform us with hope. O God, most majestic, O God, most motherly, O God, our strength and our song, you show us a vision of a tree of life with fruits for all and leaves that heal the nations. Grant us such life, the life of the Father to the Son, the life of the Spirit of our risen Savior, life in you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us sing the prayer Jesus taught us.
taste and see that God is good.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Generous God, at this table we have tasted your immeasurable grace. As grains of wheat are gathered into one bread, now make us one loaf to feed the world. In the name of Jesus, the bread of life. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.